riches and fame and popularity, all those things mean nothing if you don't show love to other people. You can have the, the greatest image, you can have be, be someone that so many people uh, look up to, want to be around, but you know if you aren't using that for the benefit of others, then it's really quite worthless. I'm going to be talking a little bit more about this Steven Crowder story that I've talked about before and I'm sure that you've seen, uh, talked about on other channels or, you know, read articles about maybe. Uh, you know, th th this, this very famous character who uh, have a has a lot of people looking up to him, who has presented himself in a certain way successfully for many years and drawn a great audience about himself, who has been shown to be, you know, somewhat of a, a broken and imperfect being, you know, with, with some fairly serious problems. You know, a lot has come out now about his personal life, you know, his relationship to his wife, his fairly uh, uh, abusive treatment toward her, and also the way he has treated employees, being, you know, fairly rash and impulsive, belittling his employees, sexually harassing male employees even, you know, just some kind of dark stuff that, you know, goes against this uh, image that he has tried to put out of himself as, you know, some some role model of a, a Christian man. Now, of course, I think for a lot of people looking at someone like him, there, there would have been obvious telltale signs of something being a bit off. You know, someone who uh, tries so hard, you know, to, to present this, this, this ultra-masculine image and uh, is clearly trying harder than most people in life have to try to present themselves in a certain way. You know, that, that's not uh, entirely natural. That's not really the... the example of a wholesome spirit and wholesome personality. And of course, as things are playing out, more and more people are able to see it that way. But now, this isn't just something that affects Steven Crowder or affects, you know, uh, rich and famous celebrities who have to portray themselves in a certain way to the public to get the kind of attention that they want. This is, of course, something that so many of us, maybe even all of us do on some level, you know, trying to uh, put out an image uh, that we think other people want to see to try to get to get the kind of attention that we want to get. Now there can be a good side to that. It can be good to put out a, a certain image that people want to see. It can help your interaction with others. And if it can help you to um, interact with others in a way that helps people, that lifts other people up, then of course that can be a good thing. Now sadly, a lot of people use image selfishly, as we see with someone like Steven Crowder, using it to build their brand, their audience, their following, and then to, to the people around them, anyone who he considers to be lower than him, he uh, clearly treats with, with disrespect and a, a lack of love. So what's the difference? You know, how, how do you know uh, where the line is between you know, a, a healthy attempt to portray a certain image of yourself to the public, to the world, and, and an unhealthy desire, an, an unhealthy attempt to portray yourself in a certain way. I'm going to read a little bit here from the epistle of James. James, a disciple of Jesus who left us a wonderful epistle that I have cited many times and will continue to cite. He says, From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence even of your lusts that war in your members? Ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lusts. So we see there, you know, James is, is explaining, you know, why people, uh, how people can want something so badly and uh, be praying for it, yet not receive it. It's because of what's in their hearts. Are they doing it, you know, for good reasons or for wrong reasons? And if it's something for, for lust, you know, something to feed yourself, to feed your pride, then, you know, we can pretty safely say that that would be the wrong kinds of motivations. We go back to reading from the same chapter, a, a couple verses down. But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So, you know, there's the answer. When we you know, find ourselves kind of going in the wrong direction, manifesting unwholesome things, unwholesome attitudes, hurtful attitudes. It's probably time to, to, to check ourselves and to, to check some of that behavior and 
what is the motivation for that behavior and as James says submit ourselves to God you might have to as James says resist the devil you know really fight push those thoughts out of your life out of your mind not give in to them and build on them as so many do in order to um, please the desires of the flesh the desires of the mind and the, the prideful attitude that the world expects from people when people seek uh, go out seeking self-affirmation and uh, trying to draw others to themselves you know very likely they're going to do things that are unloving that are unwholesome and that don't have a good effect on those around them and we can see it in these examples of some of these very big celebrities who try so so hard to put themselves out in a certain way and lead broken undesirable lives that when we see and when we hear about it, we think whoa you know I, I wouldn't really want to be like that now now certainly th this has been a human thing forever as long as people have been around people have had desires to portray themselves in a certain way toward others and again that's, that's not always wrong you can use that positively you can use that to be a blessing to others to uh, lift others up and show an interest in others but let's be honest you know a, a, a lot of that is selfish uh, so often you know when when people try very hard to project a certain image it is for selfish reasons so why is that so prevalent and why does it seem to be growing in prevalence as you know we progress more and more to the modern age with more and more uh, luxuries and and easy ways of living but why do people become more and more uh, obsessed with images you know it used to be something that like like the 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 upper class was able to indulge in but as time goes on and more and more people enjoy the 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 benefits of what used to be reserved only for the upper class you know we have so much more more uh, access to entertainment and luxuries and whatnot I think more and more people are becoming overly interested in their identity and their image so some of it I think is just a product of the modern world you know we have uh, more ease more time to do things more time to explore to you know find different interests and sadly a lot of that ends up uh, becoming focused on ourselves a lot of that time and interest and effort you know we we uh, project inwardly and we try to find more ways to please ourselves that is kind of something that humans do when given the opportunity but then that also does have a bit of a snowball effect because you know the more that we are uh, looking inward and not thinking about how others might feel and what they might need then you know it kind of becomes a, a self-fulfilling event where the more inward we look the more inward others will look because as we ignore each other as we spend more time on ourselves we increase the phenomenon of loneliness and neediness people needing human interaction human approval that they can't get therefore seeking even harder to get it and this manifests itself on the one hand with a, a on the conservative side you know people seeking ultra masculinity you know some archetype of the masculine figure with the the appearance and the body and the manner and all that and on the other side you know people exploring changes in their gender identity just so many ways of, of people trying to express themselves trying to uh, get the positive attention that we so desire as human beings and if we don't give it to each other then that makes people more defensive more needy and more searching to have that kind of positive feedback it's a funny thing you know but I think it is a problem that kind of feeds itself now to be sure there are people who legitimately fit these kinds of roles you know there are cowboys and fishermen and farmers and lumberjacks you know people who fit that masculine archetype and they fit it naturally and they are great people and carry themselves well and have a positive effect on those around them there are on the other hand there are people of course who are legitimately transgender there are men who are uh, legit legitimately and naturally more effeminate women who are a bit more masculine there, there are so many different kinds of people and so many different positive ways that we can express ourselves just so long as we don't try so hard to please ourselves you know so much emphasis in the world is put on people being themselves and that's good you know it's good to be yourself be who you are but just as importantly or even more importantly is to 
use whatever you have, whatever kind of identity, whatever kind of personality you have to reach out and be a blessing to others and lift others up, show an interest in other people and affirm other people. You see that video, you know, Steven Crowder with his wife. How sad that is, how sad that is, you know, this, this rich man that so many people look up to and, and look what has happened to him. Look what his journey, his journey of uh, self-discovery and building his image, look where that has led him. Riches and fame and popularity, all those things mean nothing if you don't show love to other people. You can have the, the greatest image, you can have be, be someone that so many people uh, look up to, want to be around, but you know if you aren't using that for the benefit of others, then it's really quite worthless. On the other hand, you can be a, a humble, unassuming person that doesn't fit any particular archetype that people look up to, and yet you can be the, the most sharing, giving, loving person and make so many people happy, and you can be the greatest person in the world in the eyes of others because of all the love that you show. Now, when I think about the, the apostles, you know, the, the people in the New Testament, the great examples, the people of faith, you know, that's more what I think of. You know, I think a lot of people probably weren't super impressive in their outward appearance, in the way that they presented themselves, in the way that they looked to others. I think, you know, Paul even writes a bit about his kind of uh, demeaning of himself. From his description of himself, he doesn't really think very much of, you know, the way he looks or the way he speaks. Yet it's, it's what he gives to others, it's what he pours into others that made him great. In fact, speaking of Paul, I'm going to read a little bit from one of Paul's letters, his letter to the Corinthians, chapter 13, where he talks about love and the importance of manifesting love. He says, Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Skipping down a few verses, he says, When I was a child, I spoke as a child, I thought as a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I gave up childish ways. Paul talks about growing up, becoming a man, and putting away childish things. And I just think about how we all go through through a process in life, you know, as we learn, as we grow, as we discover who we are and discover what we're supposed to do with our lives. And the more we learn to give, you know, the more we learn to look to the needs of others, the more we learn to lift others up and show an interest in others, I think that that is the kind of healthy development that we all need to go through. It's a journey towards love, a journey towards less of ourselves and more importance on others. Well, thanks for watching. I hope this was interesting. And whatever you think of it, please be sure to leave a comment below. Tell me what you think. And I will talk to you again later. Bye for now.